some comments made at the time that we would be back this year looking to bump the service charge up to ten dollars. We're not here to do that. We're here to recommend two percent across the board, low tier and high tier. And that's what that's where that two percent number comes from. As Dave mentioned, you know, there are times when we've been requested to look at alternate proposals. What if we did three percent on the high and zero percent on the low? And that's I think why typically we don't ask for a vote the first evening we present this. I believe if my memory serves me right, I said seven fifty and not ten. Oh. <laughs> Two comments for that. I wasn't being specific with the names. Two comments for that. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, Bob? Yes. Uh, the inflationary, you know, we're looking at inflation at least 3% in, in this business, so 2% is, is obviously a very conservative number. Uh, and the other reason for the five and not to look at bumping that up, I just wanted to get home early. I appreciate that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> just just well, we earlier. Move it, Dave. That didn't get home real early. <laughs> I'd be in favor of that. Just, well, just did you get up early this morning to shovel snow? <laughs> <laughs> just, just in relation to you know fire hydro maintenance and iron service replacement, the stuff that uh, is ongoing maintenance. What would we have to do in order to get that into the operating budget? need to get it where it belongs rather than out of the capital plan. I, I guess my comment on that is where it does show, the items that show as being funded from water revenue are actually being funded by the operating budget. They're shown in the capital plan, fire hydrants, because they're actual capital infrastructure, the water services, the water mains. That's why they're shown here. Um, so they are, in, they are being funded through the water budget. They're shown in the capital plan. I look at them as, as capital items. But it's confusing to the board because you're looking at the total aggregate and the number. You're looking at the, the retirement of your debt, the match new debt that we take on, and that gets that can be confusing in the math. Mm -hmm. So the Finance Committee just basically recommended that we actually take that out of the capital plan and uh, start to short in the operating budget. So you'd see it as tasks that have to get done. But you just see it in the the, the uh, bulletized items that we prepare for you in the operating budget uh, every year. When if you look at the big line expenses, it's in that big line expenses. I mean, it isn't spelled out to that detail in the operating budget, but it is. There. I mean, the, the comment was it should be pulled out of the capital plan. We shouldn't even be showing that as a capital expense. What are we in relation to the hydro replacement? It's been ongoing for years. Some of the old ones that we put in the work. Is that different than maintenance or is it replacement of hydrants? There is a difference between maintenance and replacement of hydrants. So the oldest style hydrants we have, we have some hydrants dating back to the, to the late 1930s, which is the age of the water system. We don't maintain those hydrants. So if we get the opportunity, we just replace those. The maintenance relates to if a, a newer hydrant gets hit or a there's a damage to a, a hydrant that you know is a current model. We have three models we currently spec. Those we do maintain. We don't necessarily just pull those out and replace them. If we pull one out that does get damaged, we'll take it apart and keep the parts down at the garage and then reuse those parts. But the older there are still there are still some 1930 and 40 vintage hydrants in town. Are we doing a replacing those? Is, is that an ongoing program or is it hit or miss as we no, we, it is an ongoing. We hit them, we replace them. <laughs> <laughs> no, the answer is ongoing. Program. Excuse me. The answer is if we fund them, it's ongoing. Uh, when when we were thin in terms of being able to meet this budget, and we were carrying that deficit. Uh, we were not, even though we were showing it, that we weren't we weren't spending the money. Uh, so because we now in the black, uh, we can rewrite our capital and our high end operations maintenance and actually get the work committed to and get it accomplished. So we have had a gap for a few years. This will allow us to get back and address it on the I used to be a former member of the board who loved the old hybrids. Uh, Thank you for reminding me. better than the old <laughs> supposedly. Right? I just want to give how close are we in replacing the older, older 
So we, I mean, we tailor it to Route 62. Didn't include water, infrastructure, maintenance, but most of the hydrants there were called for being removed and reset. So if there were 1950s hydrants, even though we might have some 1930s hydrants, you know, we, we committed to replacing those 1950s hydrants for that specific But in general, our feeling is the older ones that we can't get parts for anymore aren't necessarily better than the new ones, and that's what we're working for. Additional questions? Okay. We'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Put it on our agenda for our what next issues? regular meeting for a book. Uh, they've, they've really done a great job over the last few years of bringing this book coming solvent again. It's really a major issue. Mm -hmm. done a great job getting us to play with Jim might show yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Might be cheaper if I start now. <laughs> <laughs> he did call. He's a great attorney, though. Thank you, Gordon. That's funny, Jim. That's the funniest thing I heard all night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good evening for those who um, you haven't met. My name is John Noon. I represent Lincoln Property Company. And is there any particular um, well, items or just a general John, summary? John, I, I thought that, uh, you know, there's a couple members of the board obviously tracking this much closer because we're right. on subcommittees. Okay. And I thought uh, as a result of the presentation that was made at the uh, 40B subcommittee meeting okay. the other day, that there was a lot of very good information that was presented. And I thought it was probably a good time to bring the board up to current uh, staff. Okay. Why don't I just bring everybody up to be where I am? The process, and then if you like, I got a couple of points I can show some of the members in a little more detail. I think that would be good. Okay, great. Um, we filed a formal 40B application with the town of North Reading, and we had our first ZBA hearing on December 15th, and that officially commenced the public hearing process for our application. The ZBA went ahead and set up a, a subcommittee uh, made up of basically all the major departments of the town, and we had our first meeting a couple of weeks ago to kick that process off and right now you think we're on a basically meeting every two weeks uh, in the interim working with the various department heads to try, to try to address their concerns head on and I expect that process will continue for the next several weeks ahead. Um, that's one track um, and, and I'll go back to the 40B a little more detail but I'd just like to also briefly touch upon the parallel 40S track, um, excuse me 40R. I'll jump to 40S at the end. Um, basically, in 2004, the state uh, came out and passed a new law called 40R, and it was a way to try to incentivize communities to um, entertain and be more open to uh, what they call smart growth development, uh, and more importantly, residential development, particularly multifamily style housing, to help uh, increase the uh, number of affordable housing units in a particular community and also to help with the housing crisis. All right. Commonwealth. So basically, um, during the process we've been going um, through here in the town, we agreed that we would be um, willing to, and I use this word, convert uh, any 40B permit we were issued into a 40R permit. And in general, what the 40R permit does for the town is two things. It, it, it gives the town two uh, one-time payments. The first payment would be the equivalent of $1,000 per unit, in our case approximately $400,000, would be paid from the state to the town upon the approval of the 40R 
overlay district zoning. And this is this is a zoning district that's just particular to one area, in this case, the J.T. Berry Center site. The second component of that 40R is um, another $1.2 million, or the equivalent of $3,000 per unit. And that is basically kicks in once uh, building permits are issued under the 40R permit. So the total to the town is approximately $1.6 million under that particular program. The next piece to follow, um, which was recently uh, approved, is what they call 40S, and that's a further uh, incentive for towns. And that 40S program has been set up to reimburse towns for any incremental costs that a particular project might have on the local school system. Um, so that that's kind of the difference between the 40R, 40S program and the 40B program. Um, we have uh, ag agreed to uh, assist the town in drafting that 40R zoning, and we are on a, a very fast-paced schedule. We were able to successfully get the uh, zoning drafted, and we had our first planning board meeting uh, last two weeks ago to review that, and I believe we're on track to come before the joint session for this board and the planning board, and I believe we're, we've got a consensus on the 40R zoning. The 40R zoning is just reverse engineering the 40B process and the 40B proposal. So basically, the 40B gets approved. What gets approved under the 40B would, again, using the term loosely, convert into a 40R permit. And again, the zoning is very site-specific. It's not town-wide. It's site-specific for this particular location. Back to the 40B for a couple minutes. Um, we're proposing uh, a total of approximately 400 units, um, 408 to be exact, 360 um, multifamily rental units, and a townhouse component of approximately 48 units. Now, what's really important, uh, the town is trying, as we've been working with the town, to achieve two primary goals. Uh, the first goal was to provide enough uh, leaching capacity for the town's future sewer use. And that's always been one of the primary reasons that the town has been um, at least open to uh, accepting an application and going through the process to see if, see if this is going to create all the benefits that we all think it's going to. That was the primary benefit. The secondary benefit, um, in no particular order, is that this would inoculate the town from um, any, for the, any further 40B <coughs> development. Now, under the 40B program, all of the rental units count towards your 10% requirement. Except for home ownership units, only the affordable units, 25% of the 48 would count towards your 40B. Now, um, the subcommittee has asked us to consider taking another look at our proposal and coming in with approximately 400, 401, maybe a few more, all rental units, and to remove the home ownership units. And that way, uh, that would definitely uh, inoculate you from 40B because you'd be over the 10 percent. Right now, under our, our proposals that formally pending before the town, we're a little short to to get over the 40B limit. So I think we're going to be able to accomplish that. We've got our engineers. We anticipated that issue because we had a, a detailed memo from the planning director several weeks ago identifying that as a potential concern. So we've we've already started to address that. We hope in the next uh, couple of weeks we'll be able to submit a more formal plan showing that change. So again, the 40B process is uh, we're well underway. We understand we'll be retaining some peer review consultants. Um, the sub, this large sub subcommittee is going to hire to review our plans. And um, I don't think anything. Did I miss anything, Dave? You've been around. I'm sorry. So I'm You're sorry. Sorry. Excuse me, Jim. Jim, covered everything. I'm Jim Senior. I'm here to introduce John Doing. <laughs> John, he doesn't know. He's going to have to watch the tape. I, the role, I, I don't know what you missed. <laughs> um, I do have a plan if you'd like to take a look I think that, uh, some of the board members probably haven't seen it. We jumped the gun, Jim, so we didn't have to listen to your sermon. Probably just as well. These are a little dated. Uh, all the original presentation boards are on the engineer's office being worked on. But uh, just, for the, uh, just for a general discussion, my finger is going to outline this parcel right here. It's about 85 acres, and we have basically split the parcel in half. The Gutierrez Company has been 